the optimism felt by many in the agriculture sector during the 1970s would be short-lived. October the 6th, 1979, they slammed on the monetary brakes under new chairman Paul Volcker, who had been in office only since August of that year. And the consequence was it threw a lot of farmers into the windshield when they slammed on the monetary brakes. We had not had an aggressive Fed for some time, and no one, I think, really seriously thought about the possibility that the Federal Reserve could cause uh, such a change in monetary policy so quickly. While the Federal Reserve's new policy managed to hold the line on inflation, it pushed real interest rates to levels not seen since the Civil War. Interest rates soared from single to double digits, hitting a record 21.5% in 1981. The Fed's actions made the cost of borrowing money prohibitive for all Americans, but the effect on farm families and rural bankers was especially severe. We could see coming in through the examination reports trouble starting to build. And you could see that loans were get, getting larger. And as interest rates started moving up, uh, people got so they couldn't pay their interest, uh, let alone make a principal payment. And more and more loans just had to be extended and uh, things started to not look so good. I think individuals always believe that what happens in the short run is going to happen in the long run. And so when we had this inflation going on for late 60s, all through the decade of the 70s, why <clears throat> producers believed that that was what was going to happen. And at the same time, we had a Federal Reserve policy that was holding interest rates in single digits while agricultural land was increasing at double digits. So the signals that were sent uh, by, uh, by policy and by the inflation that was in the economy uh, turned out to be uh, bad signals. Then to make a bad situation even worse, in late 1979, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. I have decided to halt or to reduce exports to the Soviet Union in three areas that are particularly important to them. In protest, President Jimmy Carter stopped the shipment of farm products to the Soviet Union, costing the American farmer a crucial overseas market. When President Carter put the grain embargo on, I had several hundred booths of grain in bins and like I say, my net worth dropped $20,000 overnight. About the time I had to refinance the farming operation. And he said, well, you can't do that. You lost $20,000. I said, I didn't lose it. Carter lost it for me. Well, then I had to get refinanced and had to refinance the farm. And I was paying 7% interest, had to refinance through John Hancock at 16%. Two years of that and I was, couldn't pay anymore. 